babies. They come in all shapes and sizes. And generally, the bigger the animal, the bigger the baby. So, a baby might be puny compared to its parent, but that doesn't mean it's not a mini giant. The phrase little baby applies to most infants, but not to elephant calves like Nandi. That's a whole lot of baby. Nandi is the newest addition to our African elephant herd, and she's our first baby elephant at the Reed Park Zoo. Just hours after she was born, Nandi could see, smell, and walk. Before long, she figured out how to put her most distinguishing feature to good use. Her trunk contains around 100,000 muscles. African elephants have amazing trunks, and their trunks are um, so many things to them. They're an arm and a straw all in one. Their trunks, even more interesting, I think, are used when they greet each other and when they interact with each other. So their trunks are a way that they connect, uh, much like we might hug a friend or shake the hand of someone we've just met. That's what elephants use their trunk for, for their communication. Now, just less than one year old, Nandi spends most of her time checking out anything she can reach. And if she strays too far, her mother Samba coaxes her back in line. Samba's interactions with Nandi are very gentle and sweet. Samba uses her trunk to touch her and to comfort her and to guide her along. So if she's trailing behind or she's moving too slow, Samba will use her trunk to kind of push her, give her a little boost. But it takes a village to raise a baby elephant. So when Nandi gets hungry, she can get milk not only from Samba, but from any of her aunts, known as Allah mothers. In the wild, Allah mothers make sure the calf keeps up with the herd and doesn't end up as a lion's lunch. But Nandi doesn't have to worry about that here. Nandi is very, very enthusiastic when she greets her keepers in the morning, when she gets to go out onto the exhibit. She flares her ears out and trumpets and runs really quickly like a little kid who's excited to go out and play. She will often run out and grab an item. It might be a branch, it might be a piece of hay or a chunk of bark, and she'll hold her trunk up high and wave it around as though it were a flag, and it's just really, really cute. It's hard not to laugh when you watch her, hard not to be in a really great mood. African elephants are the world's largest land animals. By the time Nandi's six, she'll tip the scales at more than a ton. Her big brother, Sun Tzu, who's four years old, is well on his way. Sun Tzu was the former baby of the family, and he had a difficult time adjusting to not being always under mom's feet. But over time, over several months, he really became more curious about Nandi and now plays with her almost every day. It's really sweet. He's very gentle with her. By playing with Sun Tzu and interacting with the rest of the herd, Nandi's experiencing a world similar to what she'd face out in the wild. She's learning how to be an elephant. She has just recently encountered our pool, and it's a little different perhaps than a wild stream in that it has slightly steep steps, and so her first venture in, she just ran into the pool and sank. She was okay, she was with her mom, and she was able to swim, but that's something that's really important for young calves in the wild, to learn how to negotiate mud wallows and bodies of water so that they can be safe. In the wild, Nandi and the rest of the herd would depend on Nandi's mom, Samba, the dominant female, or matriarch. Matriarchs play a critical role in guiding the herd to water and food. The loss of the matriarch can devastate the herd. Out in the open, the risk is real. One of the problems that we're facing is that matriarchs, just like bulls, do have long tusks, and elephants are often poached for their ivory tusks. 
and it's typically the older elephants. And so a problem can be when older elephants are taken out of the population, the knowledge that they have that they've not yet passed down to the rest of the herd is lost with their death. Nandi will reach sexual maturity at around 12 years old. By then, she'll tower up to four meters tall and weigh more than 5,000 kilograms. But for now, all that really matters to Nandi is hanging out with the herd and enjoying her special role as the baby of the family. They're built like beefy weightlifters, as wide as they are tall. Western lowland gorillas stand at 170 centimeters, but can max out at nearly 160 kilograms, making them the largest primates on the planet. But not this girl. At not quite two years old, Anaka is still a relative lightweight and a total original. She has this curly hair that really sets her apart from the other individuals in the group. When Anaka was born, she weighed around two kilograms. Anaka's mother is Sukari, which in Swahili means sugar. And as far as Anaka's concerned, her mom is the sweetest. All of the gorillas' moms seem to have their own parenting style, just like humans. And Sakari's the type of mom that, you know, she wants to have an eye on her infant, but she has no problem if Anaka goes off and plays by herself for a little bit as long as she can keep an eye on her. And Anaka appreciates the freedom to roam. She learned to walk on her own at about 30 weeks old. But even before that, she cultivated her own style and resisted being babied. Normally, gorilla moms will hold them, but within like that first day, Anaka was already riding on Sakari's back, which is really interesting, but she's kind of been that sort of, I'm a tough little girl all along from day one. But even a tough little girl needs a little help sometimes. When she gets frightened, she's quick to call mom, and she can make a loud scream when she's a little bit frightened, and everybody thinks, oh my gosh, what's wrong? But it's just her, you know, wanting to be closer to mom. Huge adult gorillas like Sukari can look pretty scary, but they are, in fact, very shy, peaceful herbivores. Unlike other gorillas that sleep in trees, lowland gorillas like Sukari and Anaka sleep on the ground. But Anaka and Sukari spend much of their waking hours in the trees, looking for leaves and fruit to eat. Because the food is so small and gorillas are so big, Anaka must eat almost constantly, when she's not resting or playing with her pals. We have four juveniles in our group, and with four juveniles, any time is playtime, really. So they're always chasing, wrestling, and making all these, all these interesting noises, these vocalizations that are associated often with these play behaviors. Some of the other youngsters will even give Anaka a lift. I wonder how that's possible, because they weigh almost about the same. They both weigh about 30 pounds. So I just think, oh, how are they doing that? But I think it's just part of being a gorilla and something they do. Playtime isn't just for the youngsters. Every once in a while, mom joins the fun. But at the end of the day, she's still Anaka's mother and protector. Anaka is very dependent on her mom, and she will sleep with her at night. She rides on her back still. Anytime there's a moment where Anaka is a little nervous, she will, of course, go right to her mom. Sukari will continue nursing Anaka for another couple of years. Although lately, Anaka is starting to develop a hankering for solid food when she can get it. Her mom doesn't actively share with her, but her mom does let her pick up food that maybe her mom has dropped. Gorillas are super social animals that hang out in troops. In the wild, a troop usually has five to 10 members. It would be one male, and an adult male is called a silverback, and he would be with several females that he's breeding with, and then of course they're kids. Lowland gorillas, like humans, have no distinct breeding season. The game is always on, but it's not always easy. First of all, a female will only start breeding when she's 10 years old, 
Then, with a 40% infant mortality rate, she will only actually produce a healthy baby every six to eight years. When a baby like Anaka finally joins the troop, she learns very quickly who's the boss. The dominant male, the silverback. He has a very important job, which <laughs> is a difficult job, but that's to keep all of the girls in line and to keep peace within that family group. At the silverback's side are females like Sukari with their babies. Slightly further away sit the females without babies. And relegated to the outskirts of the troop are the sub-adult males. In captivity, as in the wild, anything Anaka and the other youngsters need to know about their world, they learn within this tight structure. They're watching their parents for how to forage, what to eat, how to interact with other individuals. They're learning sort of the social norms of being a gorilla, a well-socialized gorilla. Along the way, one of the big lessons Anaka will learn is that one day, she will have to leave all this behind. And once the kids become old enough and they reach sexual maturity, they actually disperse from the group. In the wild, Anaka could typically live as long as 40 years, and maybe even have a few babies. For now, here in the zoo, she's just hanging out and loving life. Tough, rambunctious, and fast on his feet, this young white rhino doesn't take orders from anybody. Only two and a half months old and already around 100 kilograms, this baby, known as Tino, was born to run. When he was first born, he was up on his feet within about half an hour. And from then, he, he actually found his feet very quickly. He had big, adventurous little dudes round and round and round in his boma and checking everything out before he could even even really walk properly. In the wild, Tino's fleet feet could keep him safe from predators if he should wander away from his mom. But here, running's just a way to burn off energy when he's not wallowing in the mud or exploring his new home. It's all mom can do to keep up with him. And once he stops pounding the turf, Tino's ready to go head to head with the grown ups. He very much likes to show the others that he's this big brave thing. He runs up to them and says, I'm the boss today, I'm gonna, gonna push you around and then something will give him a fright and he'll run away and squeal like a little child. He is very much a mama's boy, yeah, so mum is very good at being very protective of him, so he knows he's safe when he runs up and hides behind mum. Tino's mom, Tamu, could have been carrying this big bruiser for up to a year and a half. He was born a healthy 50 kilograms, and since then, he's just continued to grow. One and a half kilograms every day. He began drinking milk mere hours after he was born. But soon, Tamu will wean him and show him how to eat short grasses. Food is just the start of the mother-baby bond. White rhinos are some of the most devoted moms in the world. They generally stay with their babies for two to four years. So Mum is very much being the teacher of getting him to use his horns, so they do a lot of sparring, where they sort of play fight with the, both their horns. She's teaching him to rub on things to shape his horn. She's been very good in, in showing him the essential parts of life so far. White rhinos are one of the most social rhinoceros species. Females lead their calves and adolescents in tight-knit herds of up to 14. These guys actually depend on their mum or their siblings or even just their herd to keep their mentality. These guys actually get quite depressed if they're alone. 
At one month old, white rhinos are only about 60 centimeters tall. But give them a little time. They're the largest living species of rhinoceros, growing as big as an SUV and weighing up to two and a half tons. The little nub on Tino's head will eventually develop into two distinct horns. The larger front horn will never stop growing and can reach up to one and a half meters. Horns grow from the skin and are made of compressed strands of keratin, the same material as our fingernails and hair. And just like those, a rhino horn will grow back if it breaks off. Females use their horns to protect their young, while males use them against predators and to spar with other rhinos. But these important tools, unique to rhinoceros, are a double-edged sword. A lucrative horn poaching business has endangered the rhinoceros population. That's what makes Tino's birth such a triumph. Thanks to the strength of rhinoceros mothers like Tamu and conservation areas like this one, the white rhino has made a huge comeback. Now reclassified as near threatened, 20,000 live in protected areas. Ultimately what we're trying to do is stop these guys from becoming extinct and the more we can get these guys up in numbers we can start to release them back into the wild. So having this rhino calf born here is, is num another number into that, but it's a huge feat for us as well. This little calf's life is a celebration. Once he's ready, he will be sent off to mate. But he has a few frolicking years left before that happens. For now, after a boisterous day in the park, a nap is in order. Mother Tamu will welcome the break. While it lasts. Majestic and strong, an enduring symbol of the Great Plains. The bison is the heaviest land animal in North America, reaching a height of 1.8 meters and weighing up to 900 kilograms. Even newborns are pretty big and cute. Every April or May, mother bison give birth to babies that weigh in between 15 and 25 kilograms. Though he may look defenseless as a newborn calf, you'd never want to get between him and his mother. No, you really don't want to approach a bison in the wild, and there's a couple reasons for that. They have very bad eyesight, and they're very big. So when they don't know what you are, they're going to charge at you. Big or small, once they get moving, they're hard to stop. This little one's eager to stretch his legs. They get happy, they get excited, they'll kick, they'll buck, they'll bounce around. If one gets excited and starts running, they will all start running. And they just, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they get like puppy crazies, and it's great. Despite their massive size, bison are surprisingly swift on their feet. When they have to, they can run up to 65 kilometers an hour. While bison are powerful symbols of the North American frontier, they didn't originate here. Like humans, their ancestors reached North America by crossing the Bering Land Bridge some 500,000 years ago. And like us, they started raising families and made themselves at home on the range, which allowed them to pay more attention to their grooming. In captivity and in the wild, a little guy like this sticks to his mom like a shadow. Mama wouldn't have it any other way. They're great mamas. They um, definitely keep the calf close, and they will always put themselves between a calf and a person. If a person walks up, they'll put themselves. They scoot it under them. They, um, when it is first born, they'll bump it up and get it nursing and guide it where it needs to be to find it to be able to nurse. And they will always protect it and put themselves in between that calf and any kind of danger or person. 
barely a day old, the fur on this ginger calf will gradually darken. In four months, he'll match his mom. But not all bison are dark. We have a couple herd of bison here. We have white bison and we have brown bison here. In the wild, the rare white bison are considered sacred among some Native American religions. Whatever the color, baby bison are quick studies. This fella was standing on his own at 10 minutes old and nursing within a half hour. For the next 18 months, he'll continue to nurse, but he's also fully equipped to start grazing at only five days old. The skills a bison calf learned, it does know how to nurse. Um, they are born with all their teeth. They have this full set of baby teeth, so they can actually start picking up how to eat hay, how to do all that, how to drink water, and how to start surviving from the time they're very small. By the time he's nine months old, this guy can weigh up to 180 kilograms. The males and females do develop differently. Males get bigger. They have a lot more shag around their heads. Both do have horns. On an adult bull, these horns can grow up to 60 centimeters. Males keep growing for up to a dozen years, but females reach their maximum size when they reach sexual maturity at age three. Males, however, are late bloomers and don't usually mate until they're around six years old. Adult bison are almost too big to tangle with, but in the wild, the calves can fall prey to bears and wolves. They find safety in numbers. They all know to follow a herd, which I think is a skill essential for surviving in the wild because they are prey animals. It keeps them alive to be in a herd and they've learned that. So if he were in the wild, this vulnerable bison calf has got the whole herd to protect him until he grows majestic and strong. Until then, he can just practice some speedy and graceful running. Graceful might take a little longer. Except for their size, these big babies couldn't be more different. Each is a mini version of its giant parents, and each is a keen student, learning how to make its way in the world. <laughs>